Hey, this is Herman here from Dragon Force. And I'm Sam, and we're here on Pit Cam TV, right? Yeah, we are hanging out here, talk about the new album, Maximum Overload, in some serious details. Hello, everybody. I am Armin for Pit Cam TV, and I am here joined by Dragon Force once again. Nice to have you back, guys. Thank you. It's our third time on Pit Cam TV. Well, it's my first, I think, so wow, it's a pretty great experience. Well, okay, so we are going to talk about your new album, Maximum Overload, and this time we're going to do not a walkthrough like in video games, but a talk through, I guess. So we are going to talk about uh, the songs and just hear a, a few sentences uh, about them from you. So the first song is called The Game. Tell us about it. Wow, this is going to be very difficult. We've got to go <laughs> song by song. Okay, Sam, you start off. Uh, um, okay, well, actually, yeah, we were saying last night we better try and remember what these songs are about. But <laughs> luckily for us this time, they actually are about something. Um, this is a heavy, this is probably the, one of the fastest one and the heaviest one. Definitely one of the heaviest songs we ever done on all our albums, right? Yeah, With yeah. With the seven string guitars and all that. So this is... Um, and it's 240 BPM. Is it 240? It's the fastest we've ever done. Wow, that is the fastest end. Well, it's, we hate to say... Our album is faster and heavier, but this song really is faster and heavier, even by numbers and by the guitar. Yeah, if you go by the numbers of the BPM and the, the string gauge, then it's faster and heavier. Yeah, I, re I remember last time you said also, this album is faster. Yeah, but I wasn't lying, and this time I wasn't lying either, because last time I Fallen World was fast, but yeah, this is exactly. faster. So, well, yeah. there you go. But anyway, yeah, now this, this song's about, um, it's basically about, a guy that's kind of down on his luck and you know like thinks of, it's a bit of a sad song actually which is funny because usually everyone says oh you guys are supposed to be happy band but well, like, there is quite a lot of drama in your album uh, overall right just just like our lives <laughs> no but uh, it's pretty much about you know i mean it's pretty much and everyone can relate to this one because um it's about pre pretty much you know everyday lives where you know the, the challenges we all have to face really yeah. and yeah I mean, yeah, so mainly, you're, you're, I guess when the video comes out, you'll get a better idea too. But I don't want to give that away too. <laughs> okay. So we don't spoil and say that there are shouts in it this time. How did you come up with that? Oh, the, oh yeah, that's right. Um, actually, by the time you see this interview, the, 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 the video should be out because we're working on it. And we probably finish it before you finish this video. Well, Editing. that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have, um, we have uh, Matt from Trivium on the, on the backing vocals here. Uh, on this song and, and that's probably the um actually he told me that's his favorite dragon force song really? probably because he's on it yeah, <laughs> but yeah yeah so he's, uh, he likes it more than the other two that he's on yeah this is his favorite one after one that he's done he's he's taken part on, on the new album yeah okay so looking forward to that um song number two is called tomorrow's kings which is my favorite i guess it, it's just it, it is actually what dragon force means to me i gotta say um maybe i'm too emotional about it but <laughs> but really yeah that's oh. why i wanted to be second on the album Everyone sam is up you sam is absolutely in agreement with this in this one so he should definitely answer this one why did we pick this a second one because yeah like you said it's definitely like everything that you want about dragon force i guess well not everything but quite a lot of things but, the, but yeah i just i really like the i just think it turned out well it's like got this nice speed i really like the chorus kind of came out nice and big with the backing vocals and everything and it just to me that's it, it's not i wouldn't say it's my favorite because i obviously like all of them but um but i like just think that's like pretty amazing but it is about a time moving faster and faster nowadays right but it is encouraging at the same time at, at the same time isn't it um what are the lyrics about that one um i can't, oh, I can't you've just got to have one chance in life that's right it, yeah man. sorry i'm like, trying to get yeah, confused like there's so many songs because we actually done um if you got the limit if you get limited edition there are 15 songs get a bit confused these days which song is about what now i'm refresh my memory but yeah the limited edition have 15 songs so you think about it yeah that's more that's almost two albums for dragon force standard okay so glad that i wrote down all the titles right so <laughs> um song number three is called no more uh, what is it about can you remember any of these <laughs> I can, but I wasn't sure. Did you do the revision before? Well, no, I just know. Go, you do it. Um, I, I'm, I know more about the music. Can't think what the next one's about. <laughs> well, there is a line in it. Um, make the same mistake. Uh, make the same mistakes a thousand times. So uh, do. It's, it's basically about breaking up with some bird and or a bird breaking up with a bloke, and you kind of think, oh, this is dumb. Like, why do I keep going out with this same bird? 
third is like a woman, I guess, in case people didn't know <laughs> the English expression. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's basically like, it's not like a sad or boo-hoo, my girlfriend left me kind of song. It's more like, oh, this is really stupid. Let's well, move on and do something else. Like drinking, like, for yeah. example. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, the next song, uh, Three Hammers, is kind of a, like a fantasy, like imagery and topic. Um, why did you choose that? We had to bring some fantasy kind of like a bit first album, second album back in there. That's why this one is easier to explain. It's a fantasy, fantasy lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I always thought fantasy was cool. Like people, some people think it's stupid, but like, I think it's cool. And like, okay, maybe you don't want a whole album of fantasy, but like one song, why not? Um, so where do you actually draw the line between fa a fantasy topic in general or the cheesiness so-called? How did you, how do you do that? Well, you know, it's hard to say what is cheesy. I mean, what kind of degree? If you only like one style of music, which is raw, everything is cheesy. You know, maybe even giving your mum a birthday present is cheesy. You know what I mean? <laughs> How evil and heavy and brutal you are. I mean, we don't find anything particularly cheesy in our music because I think it's pretty up triumphant, triumphant and uplifting, not in the cheesy kind of way. I, I, really, I don't think really being cheesy, maybe okay, How the Dragon was a little bit cheesy on the first album. But I think it was quite cool. <laughs> yeah? Like, but that honestly, was just yeah, super uplifting. Okay, yeah. not even cheesy. I don't yeah. even think anything is cheesy, actually, unless if you like it, then it's cool. You know, like, I think people go something like Rhapsody cheesy. I think it's great, you know, like... There's nothing cheesy. It's not more cheesy than like a Lord of the Rings movie or something. I guess. I guess if you think uh, about if you think about these brutal lyrics of like blah 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 and violence and stuff, I think it's pretty childish to be honest. If you think about it this <laughs> way, right? They say this is cheesy. We say that's childish. How old are you? Singing about beating some guy up? I mean, it's pretty stupid too. You think about it. Everything you got an answer to, to say about you know negative or positive about it. Yeah, so fantasy. I like that. Cool. <laughs> um, uh, song number five is called uh, Symphony of the Night, and it kind of displays a really a romantic image in, in a classical way, really. Um, what is it about? That's inspired by the video game Castlevania. That's, that's what the, the song and the, the melodies, the way it's thinking is kind of follow a bit classical, but in a Japanese video game type kind of, kind of, kind of tone, overtone on it. And the lyrics is also kind of inspired by that kind of that that game. That's why it's called Symphony of the Night in the end. So there's really no album with no video game inspiration. Well, I, um, no, not really. I mean, it's, I think it's li it's a little bit. I mean, you, it, if I don't tell you, you wouldn't even say it's got you know video game influence. You know anything? You could you would really say it's kind of a neoclassical neoclassical fast metal song in it. I guess Dragon that Force one's way. more. The lyrics are video game inspired rather than the music. No, it? the music too. If you listen to the music from Castlevania, oh, so you don't oh, play I've Castlevania, do you? Now, so. Neither do I, but I like the songs from it. So <laughs> I only, only Fred played Castlevania, but I like the music from it. It's, and it's very kind of in the line of that. Okay. Um, the sixth song, uh, The Sun is Dead, is very dark again, I would say, and rather dramatic. Um, is this kind of the, the future of our world that, that you see? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was actually that was one of Fred's songs, so I can't say exactly. But from what I've read of the lyrics, and I think he was telling me, it's yeah, it's basically kind of you know apocalypse into the world, this kind of thing. That's yeah. Fred is actually you know sort of, is Fred have a darker view of things, right? In life than us, actually. We kind of it's true. I mean, yeah, maybe, you know, yeah. you know, um, we're more uplifting and stuff. I mean, not Fred is miserable, but you know, he see the world's different way, and that 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 song is kind of um his idea of what, you know, is. But it is kind of, it kind of reflects like the overall topic of the album, right? So that um, like uh, technology and everything kind of spirals out of control nowadays. Do, do we lose control about it? And maybe, I don't know, it's our doom or something? Well, to be honest, I, I try to not get a modern smart, smartphone for like years and years, right? I had smartphones that, before they were called smartphones, like Linux phones and phones that you know you can't get instagram or any kind of social networking on it they just do phone things and because i just don't want to be enslaved to the phone i just don't want to be enslaved by my phone that tell me when i need to you know you know you basically do what the phone tells you to do right so and and it's kind of um the new album you know a lot the, the like the cup the album cover and the title you know talk a bit about these kind of things yeah 
Okay. Um, the seventh song, Defenders, is out already. And uh, how's the reception so far? That's a, that's a, actually, the reception been really good on, on that song. You know, so I think some fans like the kind of extra edge we put in and riffs that we haven't done before previously. I know you haven't really read. Re Sam doesn't like reading comments on the internet. So, <laughs> right. What, what, do, what do they say? Well, well, he doesn't. Yeah, people like it. Yeah, I think, people uh, like it. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's, it's definitely kind of a bit. We never really had. Well, I mean, we do have like those kind of thrashy riffs in the past, but they were kind of more buried under other stuff. Like they'd be underneath vocals and stuff. We never really kind of. And then like intros and stuff, we'd have more like mel melodic leads playing. So this is like the first song we ever done was actually kind of got an obvious thrash riff at the start, which I think is quite cool. And uh, yeah, we wondered if people might go, oh, they're turning into a thrash band, but it's like, it's still got everything else you want, you know, a nice chorus and all that. So yeah. Like, yeah, people seem to think it's cool. And, uh, and the new production, you know, with Jens Bogren, the, the sound of the album really work, um, the way the drums, the rhythm guitar and the bass, the way the rhythm section really, with of the new song really worked with the new production, which is kind of a mm. different kind of modern approach. I, I think our previous kind of sound, the, the way we produced or the, the way we liked it mixed was more kind of prog power metal. This is a bit more modern metal production. Yeah, it, it, it was the first time we worked together, right? Yeah, first time we had a really had a producer kind of to argue with. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to uh, work together with him again or was it the only time? Oh, we, we haven't thought about that yet, but actually, you know, I'm just joking. We really had a good time, not just a good time, but a really good learning experience working with Jens. I mean, we learned a lot of things from him, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, we, yeah, like I said, we haven't decided yet because was, we only just finished this one. But I think the main thing is that, well, I think I quite happily would work with him again, is that I like the end result. You know, before we started, I was a bit scared. I was like, oh, well, I'm very set in my way now. I want to be like this and be like that. And then whenever he would suggest something else, I was like, no, nah, I'm not sure about that, mate. Like, but, like, but now, when, now that we finally finished it, I'm, I really like it. So yeah, I mean, there's a good chance we would work with him again, I think. Okay. You should ask, you should ask him the question, yeah, would you say. work with Dragon Force again? <laughs> no! <laughs> well, maybe I do. Um, uh, song number eight is called Extraction Zone. And there's really a lot of uh, game sounds in it again. Uh, I know that you once said that you don't want to be reduced to that because there was a phase like where Dragon Force was kind of reduced to that. But now you really overdid it. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> But what do you think about that? Uh, basically, that, mi that middle section, right? It's mm. kind, of a, kind of rocky, kind of bluesy, almost jazzy. I just ruined it with a bunch of video game noises. Yeah. <laughs> well, we kind of thought we hadn't done it for so long. The, the last album, we kind of avoided all that stuff. And we're like, oh, you know what? Like, well, that's what we like doing. So let's just bring it back and again this, and bring it back even more. Yeah, this time it's completely over the top, right? That section of the guitars and everything. Everything was, all the noises were done on the guitar. No keyboards or anything. I liked it a lot. Yeah, so that, um, and the song, the lyrics wise, is pretty much, um, reflect some of the touring life musicians have to go through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's very nicely That's, put. And we'll let, let the listener interpret the lyrics after that, after, from what we told them now. <laughs> okay. Um, um, song number nine, number nine is called uh, City of Gold. And uh, is it uh, to be understood like a warning for people? It's rather dark, a dark theme again, I feel. Well, you know what? Um, You, you can, I think, I mean, the way I see it, you know, I was kind of living up in LA and stuff and so you, and you can see a lot of people going to the city and kind of, you know, trying to, trying to be a musician and an things actor and actors and all that stuff. And that's kind of reflect the people we've met kind of um, during that kind of time, actually. Yeah. I mean, you do, I don't guess it's like a lot of people that want to go to the city. It's basically just got someone going to the city to try and make it or whatever in like, their dreams and, yeah and, and we always kind of thought like, i met a lot of people over the years that sort of they're a bit almost like imagining that something's going to happen but not very in the reality like like when we started our band we never thought we were going to get anywhere we just wanted to play some music and, and luckily it happened but you meet all these people and they're like oh yeah we're going to be famous we're gonna and then like they're a bit disappointed if they're not you know so yeah it's kind of a, it's just about observing that kind of thing i guess But actually, the funny thing is that this was not funny, but like, um, but actually, when we were writing that song, we said let's try and make it kind of a bit sad sounding, but there actually is a kind of happy ending. Like the, when you get to the end of the chorus, it's kind of ends on an uplifting note. 
That's true. So, uh, so you kind of have to have to decide what what dreams you choose to pursue, so that you don't get stuck or disappointed. Yeah, I guess it's something like that. Yeah, just sort of don't don't be too like deluded or whatever. I know it's, you can't tell people what to do, and it's not you. Yeah, it's I mean, not to say that we're yeah, better than anyone else. It's like, like I don't think people shouldn't take risks and just be not yeah. do anything. But I mean, it's just you know, kind of tell the story of what usually happens. You see, you know, out there, you know, you really see so many people that you know been let's say they moved to like. LA for like 10 years they, they still think they're going to be the biggest rock star in the world and they're still telling you you know stuff like that and it's you know yeah. it's, it's just cool they still trying I mean yeah like we're not trying to tell trying. anyone what to do but we're just sort of like observation I guess yeah you know? all right um the last song it is a cover version you did it <laughs> and it's already known that it is that it is a ring of fire by Johnny Cash um was it fun to play that um To be honest, we said we're never going to do a cover, and we finally did. And we last album before that, we said we'd never do a mid-tempo song. We did, so we carry on the tradition of doing everything we said we won't do. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but you can't really help it. I mean, you kind of your taste change over the years. You know, we even said that when we first started, we said we're never going to play a song less than 200 BPM. Like you listen to Valley of Down, everything's just a bat 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 all the time. And then you think, well, after you've done like four albums of that, you kind of have to do something different. So, but, but you have to develop as, as yeah, an artist, yeah. right? Your taste changes too, you know, like I used to always say, oh no, I hate, like you said, we said we never do a slow song and we did like Cry Thunder on the last album. Yeah. And we're like, oh, okay. So, yeah. But yeah, no, doing cover, we thought it was cool, like, and just thought the time was right, you know? Yeah. Make a change and it forces us to, to think differently, I guess. It's like getting a producer. We said we're not going to get a producer. We said that for years. Oh, mm. Can't be bothered. You know, we just, we'll be just like being told what to do and we'll You know, we want to develop as a band that decide on making decisions, not a band that need a producer to make albums. You know, but we've proven ourselves after, you know, making I guess five albums without a producer that we can do it ourselves. And then now we, let's do a change. We're not we're not just some guys. Who's, you know, that need to be sold the producer to to make something or play the guitar for us. You know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, to. To su to sum it up, we have like a lot of tempo. We have uh, darkness. That is what I feel, kind of. But there's encouragement a lot. There's a uh, fast songs. There's only one song that is uh, longer than six minutes, I guess. Um, so when will you see you playing live in Germany? Um, actually, um, we've been working on a on some touring dates already. So hopefully, you know. You can't because this is not a written interview. You can't just just write in and say I said that these are the shows. But hopefully by now, when you see this, the shows would have been announced for later this year on tour in Germany. Yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so, uh, what are the last fun, uh, words for your fans out there? Why should they buy this album and come to your show? Um, we should mention the special edition. Even have a ballad. So we actually did write a ballad on this album. Yeah, even though it, we always do. You right. always do, but this one, we didn't put it on the album because we thought no one want to hear ballads, but actually it's a good ballad. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We actually got like, all our bonus tracks are actually as good as the album tracks. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like some car salesman or something, but like they actually are good. So like it's worth getting that. Yeah, there's, there's another kind of a battle fantasy song in that one. And there's another kind of more, more epic, long melodic song. Just we couldn't fit all on the album, so. They, you know, if they get the box set or the special edition, they get they get everything and even the instrumental track that we've done them a couple of years back. Yeah, and that was a funny thing because we thought usually people do a cover and that's your bonus track, but we were like we thought that was cool anyway, so that actually ended up on the album and then these other songs are the bonus track. Yeah. Oh, whatever. So yeah. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. That was our sneaky sneak preview. I hope you enjoyed it. I am Armin for Pitcam TV signing out. So um, can you tell what was the most influential game or game character even? What did you play most? I don't know. I think the video game machine that kind of made a big difference to me was the was the PC Engine, which um, some people call it TurboGrafx-16 in America. But it was never released in Europe, so it was a Japanese exclusive in America. Um, and so I had to get these imported games. So they were really cool. They had some really cool games. They, I was mainly to shoot them up at the beginning, you know, the spaceship picking up the power-ups, you know, good kind of fast... Reflex. You need to move fast and think fast, things like that. And then you know later on, I you know I evolved and I got a PC and played PC games. But that was kind of like the the time that I was that was before I started playing the guitar. So 
Okay. Trying to play video games then. <laughs> so, um, 